The sacred writing says this, faith comes by hearing words, good words, somebody who well chooses their words and delivers them with uniqueness can inspire faith for somebody to believe the most impossible things can be possible. And those, that excitement of possibilities comes from hearing or reading unique words. One of the best phrases I could give you for the day, here it is, don't be lazy in language. Don't be lazy in language because the gift of language can create a career. It can help somebody see the way into the future. It can help somebody change from who they are to who they would like to be. It will help you to see the gift of your own intellect. There's an, old, there's an innate vocabulary in all of us that helps us to see, helps us to translate what's going on in the world, what's happening, so that we can make good decisions instead of poor ones. We can make less mistakes this year than we made last year. One of the major things to pray for is to be gifted in language because it can have such a dynamic effect on your children. It can have such a dynamic effect on your business. It can have such a dynamic effect on your customers. It can have such a dynamic effect on your business partners that not to continually get better and better at the gift of language would be a great mistake. Let it open doors. Nothing else will open the gift of your language. Let it help people to see possibilities that they cannot see now. And you join in in those possibilities and make another fortune and another fortune. All the way up the ladder as far as you wish to go. I don't know how high you need to go. Wow. I said a little prayer before I left my hotel room this morning and asked God to give me a little stronger gift of words today so that my words might have meaning. Maybe I've caught you at just the right time. Maybe this is the moment for you. And if I can say something uniquely enough, using the English language best as I can, words are sometimes clumsy when you try to express what's going on in your head, let alone your heart. But if I can do a, as good a job as I possibly can in the session we've got this morning and then again this afternoon, by the time I'm finished, Maybe my words will help turn on another light for you. And you'll be able to see the possibilities better than you've ever seen it before. You'll be able to see yourself more successful than you've ever envisioned it before. If I can wisely say good words. Now, I've put communication in three parts because these, all three of these parts now help me make more fortunes. Here's the first one. It's called training. Training. Training is simply showing somebody how to do the business, how to do the job. If you get good at that, the pay is incredible, whether it's your own enterprise or whether you work for someone else. Training pays big money. Here's the next one, teaching. And I've divided the two just to make the point. Teaching is more teaching life skills, life skills. Teach somebody how to set goals. Gary mentioned, right, making the list and checking them off. Today he gets to check one off. Jim Rohn arrives in San Jose, Santa Clara. I'm so excited about that. Teaching leadership, teaching management, teaching how to become powerful, gifted, influential. Teaching father skills mother skills. I've now, the last 15 years, learned grandfather skills. I set a goal when I became a grandfather to be one of the best grandfathers any grandchildren ever had in the whole wide world. I practice it. I think about it. How to use my newfound life as a grandfather and learn every skill possible to dazzle my grandchildren. I'm one of the best. <laughs> so teach people how to be good fathers, good grandfathers, good mothers, good leaders in the community. Teach a minister how to teach. Teach a minister how to use the gift of language to persuade. So communication is part of its training, part of its teaching. Here's the best part, no, here's number three in the gift of language, and that's learning how to inspire. Inspire simply means 
a few simple things. Here's number one. Help people to see themselves better than they are. Yes, sometimes we have to help people see themselves as they are. If they've made mistakes, maybe that needs to be pointed out. If a child has messed up, sometimes you've got to say, you've messed up. But don't leave them in the mess. Now transport them into the future with the gift of your language. And inspire them with the person they can become. By using the mistakes of the past to develop new disciplines for the future. A teacher I met when I was 25 years old had this unusual gift. He said, Mr. Owen, if you keep learning as you're learning now, one of these days you'll walk into a room full of people and you'll hear, you'll hear someone say, there's the man. That's the man. That's the famous man. I thought, well, that could never happen for me. Sure enough, it did. He said, it will happen. And I think when I walked in here this morning, I heard someone say, that's him. That's the man. That's the famous man. Now that we've talked about some basic communication skills, you need to understand how best to apply them. What you can do and cannot do in the marketplace. How you talk and act while playing volleyball on a Saturday afternoon probably isn't the same as how you'd talk and act around a group of people who want to invest in your company. How you communicate with your old friends and family members is probably an abbreviated version of how you should communicate in a high-powered business setting. When you meet a new group of people, you must watch and listen and be alert before you decide on the appropriate communication style. You might greet old friends with a slap on the back and a tasteless joke, but you certainly wouldn't greet a multi-million dollar opportunity that way. You must take a few moments to study the temperament of your audience. Listen to how they communicate with each other. Watch how they react to situations and comments. Study your audience, lest you engage in some behavior that will prove inappropriate and costly. Some people would make about $150,000 a year, but they have to be satisfied with about fifty, because their behavior is costing them the rest of it. They've got the skills, but their behavior is costing them. Keep setting them aside. So let's talk about some of those things in the marketplace that might cost you more than you want to pay. Here's one, bad language. You've got to be careful with language in the marketplace. You've got to be careful here. Some language is more appropriate for the bar. So what should you do? Leave it in the bar. Or else what? you'll have to pay the consequences. We must all be students of consequences, things that cost us, and language is one of the most important ones to consider, language in the marketplace. Now, if you cuss and tell dirty jokes in the marketplace, that's acceptable to who? Other people in the marketplace who cuss and tell dirty jokes. You've got no problem with them. Matter of fact, they'll probably enjoy having you around. But if you cuss and tell dirty jokes to those who will be offended, then what? They certainly won't want to have you around. And what happens then? It'll cost you. Next one, being late. In some circles, it's acceptable, but I'm telling you, most people view being late as being disrespectful. Disrespectful of their time. And if they feel that you're disrespectful of their time, they'll also feel you're disrespectful of their business. Why? because everything affects everything. Now, if you have a legitimate excuse and your reputation already says that you're punctual, then you might get away with it a time or two, but be careful about being late. One day you just may be too late to close the deal. Be on time. You've also got to be careful about using inside lingo on the outside world. Your industry's buzzwords are just that your industries. Be careful not to use this terminology on the outside. People who speak computer language, they've got to learn to shift gears when they go out into the open marketplace. So watch your lingo. Remember to shift gears from the inside lingo to the outside world. 
You've got to become a good judge of character. Why? To protect yourself. There are shepherds, and there are sheep, and there are wolves. And we must be wise and understand that some wolves are so clever, they've learned to dress up like sheep. But do not miss the story of the full drama of life called good and evil. Awareness, sensitivity, understanding, knowing the scenario and being on alert for what is called the inevitable. We must learn to be a good judge of character. And here's something else we must learn to do to work well with others. We must learn to deliver criticism and express anger in a safe way. It's inevitable during the course of working with others it's inevitable that you'll come across some situation that'll result in anger or criticism needs to be handed down. It's just a part of life that you delegate some responsibility and through either a lack of good communication or a lack of good listening on the other end, it's inevitable that some situation will get you all hot and bothered. Now, what do you do with your anger? You can't lash out. You can't lash out at your children or your friends or your colleagues. But here's what you can do, and here's what you must do. Lash out at the problem or the situation. Honey, you say to your teenager, you know I love you, but what you did was wrong. I hate it that you took the car without asking first. And I especially hate it that you got a speeding ticket. What were you thinking? So whatever the punishment might be, make sure you're punishing the bad deed, not the person. Your assistant ends up sending the contract to the seller instead of the buyer. Make sure your assistant knows that you appreciate him, but you don't appreciate the wrongdoing. Whatever criticism you hand down, whatever anger you're processing, make sure that the one to receive it knows full well that you care about the person, but hate what they did. And if you're too steamed up to be this rational about it, make sure to keep your mouth closed until you've cooled off a bit. In Dale Carnegie's book, The Leader in You, he describes the attributes of kind criticism. He quotes Andres Navarro's technique of kind criticism as the three-for-one rule. If you don't like something about the way someone works, write down the problem. But before you confront that person with criticism, discover three good things about the person. Noticing three good things gives you the right to criticize one bad thing. Interesting thought. Criticism after appreciation. With well-delivered words, well-chosen words, you could admonish the doing without admonishing the doer. This is important. You love the person. You hate the act. Make sure they know the difference. You don't have to couch the words. You don't have to hide your anger or disappointment. But you do have to make sure that your communication is effective so that the wrongdoing will never be done again. And the more you care, the stronger you can be. This has to do with intensity now. The intensity of your communication to those you work with, those you live with, those you're close to. The more you care, the stronger you can be. If you really care for someone, I'm telling you, they'll give you room to get right on their case. They'll give you room to use some powerful language. They'll give you room to go right after them if they feel, if they know that you really care. You can solve some sticky problems. You can attack the dark side and the bad behavior. They'll give you room if they know how much you care. And the more you care, the stronger you can be. Chẳng 
con mơ vô gia cho bên mơ em có mơ hay nhẹ anh một năm mơ chỉ cho mẹ em không được cần nhớ và trôi không muốn nhớ và người ta bên nhau như ngã tơ Build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature 
And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Anxiety, filling up every space, no privacy uh, And silently, it could build and build until you finally see Whoa, it's taking over, damn no closure, moving closer No exposure, I just wanna be a loner uh, Some can't stay sober, looking over all their shoulders Like moving boulders just to get out of the home It sucks, I've had enough, I don't wanna feel the stuck Under the rug, all my problems that I shove I got nightmares in my head, I fear That the thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I got nightmares in my head, I fear That the thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I've been feeling weird, I can't seem to focus good enough Nothing's really clear, sometimes it could be a little tough I just need to feel like the end's in sight for me But let's be really real, anxiety can foggy all this stuff I've been feeling weird, I can't seem to focus good enough Nothing's really clear, sometimes it could be a little tough I just need to feel like the end's in sight for me But let's be really real, anxiety can foggy yeah. all this stuff it sucks when you finally feel like giving up Oh God, no luck Everything feels like you're sticky stuck I'm lost, handcuffed To the bed where I sleep, don't give a fuck Can't stop, unplug Feeling overwhelmed, I think I've had enough uh, Gotta find a way to get some energy Gotta find someone who's a good friend of me I need purpose to make it all worth it I'm still searching and I'm still learning I want a life that's filled with memories Not a life with regret in front of me I need focus to keep me from hopeless Psychosis if I keep moping I got nightmares in my head, I feel Thank you.